yo, 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 yo. Welcome to the Fathers from the Hood podcast. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? This is Dan Black. This is Dan Black. And uh, we're at the Monster Mix studio. We got another guest in here today. And we're going to shout out to my boy, man, my buddy Craig. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But yeah, like I said, we're just going to shout out to the location that we're in, monstermixllc.com. We're going to shout out to a couple sponsors that we also have. Shout out to danblack.com. Go ahead and look that up. Um, also, um, the person that's responsible for helping us build these websites is Azu Direct Tech. You guys can't reach out to him. And also, um, if you guys are looking for a couple of shout outs, let us know. We also got fathers uh, in hip hop that's definitely been a supporter. Um, and he uh, has a lot of things that's going on. So we'll probably have him on soon. But yeah, for the most part, we're just going to get started with this cast and let y'all know how it is, you know. Um, like I said, we're going to go ahead and introduce one of the guests that we do have, man. It's a very good friend of mine. Um, you know, like I Thank said, a, a, pot <laughs> yeah, a partner, that. partner, real good friend. <laughs> Um, like I said, uh, he's, um, I've been, I met him, you know, uh, not too long ago, but like I said, we've been able to interact with each other. He's a hell of a guitar player. He knows music and, uh, he's a great person in general. And, uh, like I said, um, he's also a father, you know what I'm saying? He comes from a place that, uh, has both sides of the scope. So yeah, we got to definitely have him here and we don't want to, uh, I've also said that at the beginning, I said, we're catered to the minorities, but we definitely don't want to, uh, divide or kind of remove people from this. We also have hey, people Graham. that are going, um, going through everything through all walks of life and that are all colors. So like I said, we have more than one guest that'll come. Um, that's from another race, that's from another gender, all that stuff, and we'll make sure we're inclusive. So um, I want to make sure we state that. Um, so yeah, um, we got a couple of talking points and we'll go into everything for the episode. I um, do claim the hood a little bit. Oh yeah, it's all good. You're going to get into your story. They know you, man. Like I said, man, uh, we, like I said, we, uh, we're not no silver spoon. For real. We come from it. We know what's up. So actually, that's the perfect time to go ahead and let Craig introduce himself. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Black. Well, yes, sir. I, uh, my name is Craig Rue. I'm from Port Charlotte, Florida. It's a small town. A lot of people don't. They would probably never heard of it unless they know anything like study hurricanes or something. Because <laughs> uh, we've had a, a major hit and a couple real close passes by some pretty big storms. I oh, mean, yeah? It gets a little scary down there a little bit here and there. But, yeah, being from Florida, you know, I love the sun. I love the, the beach. I know I'm, we're in Vegas now, but... There's not much beach around. It's all you're right. Like me, where you gonna find a body or something? Something, something. <laughs> yeah, you okay? <laughs> barrel full of fishes, you know. Oh yeah, or, or uh, depleting uh, water lines. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, growing up, uh, I, I grew up in the small town. Like it's about an hour south of Tampa. And growing up, I well, speaking of fathers, I I'm kind of one of them lucky individuals that had a deadbeat dad like a biological dad okay but um definitely had a stepdad who you know because yeah he met my mom and they had a relationship but he also formed a relationship with me okay and um definitely took me under his wing as his own uh, i even have his last name uh, he adopted me legally when i was nine years old okay so it's, it's kind of you know i've i learned to appreciate a man who will step up and even if it's not his responsibility will take responsibilities and you know, just to create that family. Um, it's not like he couldn't have kids of his own. They, I, I have a little sister that is with, uh, my half sister, technically, right? Um, still your sister, like still you my said. sister, yeah. Yes, so, and it's his daughter. So, uh, with my mother, so we do share a mom, and that's kind of cool. And you know, I just growing up, I never really thought about my biological dad. Really, okay, he, he wasn't. He was kind of in and out of jails and prisons, and uh, got arrested for some pretty big stuff, I think I was about seven years old, and was like, you know how they kind of hold you in the, the county, he got arrested in Sarasota County, uh, I guess he was like, he stole a car from somewhere and was trying to leave with some female to go somewhere, I don't know, I, I kind of heard bits and pieces of the story, I was young, and, um, <laughs> and so when he went into that situation, like he was already drugged out, he was kind of, uh, had been out of my life at that point for maybe like four years, um, I like spoke to him on the phone. Like sometimes he'd call me from a jail, you know, somewhere oh, okay. in Florida. Okay. And I'd be like five years old, going, um, okay, like I want to go throw the football with my other. Right, dad. Right, right. I have <laughs> to talk to you. She told me to talk <laughs> yeah, to you. Yeah, like uh, you know, blah blah blah. So that was always kind of weird. I have vague memories of it. Um, but it was cool. Like my my, I call him my dad. My he's my stepdad, but from here further, you know, I'll say like biological dad or dad. Oh yeah, no problem. Just to kind of, you know, ease the confusion. Clarify the difference. Yeah. 
But my dad, he would, you know, he would never bash my biological father. He would just say, you know, I'm going to try to understand how bloodlines work. And, you know, I want to try to help you not become something like that, you know, because you see it can, you know, his life choices can amalgamate to that. And those were all bad choices. So I'm just going to do what I can to help you make good choices. Right, right, right. And that seemed to, you know, always resonate with me a little bit um, for the most part. When you say um, things that you learn not to do, um, is that a part of being the new person that you are? Not now that you're an adult, but when you're growing up, sometimes you want to, you're trying to figure out what you want to do and who you want to be like, or not even who you want to be like, but you, you, would, you would learn certain things about yourself and you would kind of say, oh, this is like somebody else. This is like my father or whatever. I walk, for example, me, like my, my dad so or my real father. So it's kind of ways that you look at it with both ends. But do you say that you learn things that you learn not to do, learn that you didn't want to, you know, in, you know inherit yeah. those habits? Well, I, I mean, I know we've all heard the term nature versus nurture, you know. And it's funny, like, you know, you kind of touched on it with the, like, you know, you walk like your real dad, you know, your biological dad or, you know, um, and like, you know, you're going to have those traits correct, of the correct. nature, you know, like you can't really pass that up. Like that's kind of just there. Genetics. So Genetics. Like you can't, right. you know, like if you're related as far back as you can trace to Genghis Khan, right? Like you got something you got Genghis something. Khan <laughs> going on, right. you know, some like look you have something yeah. to, you know, that you can you know, kind of tell maybe if, you know, I know no one's alive, they'll know, but, you know, so it's like, and then they have that nurture, and like, you know, if somebody's in your life, and they're there, they're present, you know, like, um, when, you know, he'd be the coach of my flag football team, and then when I went into tackle football at like seven years old, he was not the coach, but he would hold the sticks, right? Okay. Just so he could be on the sideline. Okay. You know, because there was already other established coaches. Because once you get into, you know, it's called Pop Warner, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. when you get into Pop Warner, a lot of them coaches, they just coach Mighty Might, like, right? Like, they don't right. move up with the team and they stuff stay in like those that. Roles. They stay in that role. So he didn't, he wasn't able to coach, but he was always present. And, like, when I wanted to get into AAU basketball when I was uh, in middle school, he totally supported it. And he don't even like basketball. Like, we never really shot a lot of hoops, like, he, but he would support it, you know? Right. Like, he, and then he'd be there. Like, he would ask me, like, what's a double dribble again? And I'd be like, well. Try to get you on it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> They'd be like, they said you traveled. You, you took, what, three steps, two and a half steps? And he always, he doesn't understand the game. He understands right. football. He don't really okay. understand basketball much. So, like, you know, he always supported me. He was always there. He nurtured. So it was weird kind of, like, you know, that he wasn't. Because I kind of, like, uh, I had other friends that had, like, stepdads or, mm -hmm. You know, maybe another boy, you know, the mom's boyfriend, but they've been together for eight years. <laughs> for a while, know? yeah. He's been there. It's Type, been whatever, you know, yeah. whatever situation may come. And um, I'd see them, and they would kind of, like, I'd hear that sometimes. Like, you know, oh, would your real dad do this for you guys or this or that, you know? And, like, oh, I'd hear yeah. stuff like that. And my my dad never did that. Like, he would just try to, and, and if it was, like, said to even mean that, it was put in a way that was, like, positive and, you know, Let's do it this way. Yeah, like I just want to make sure that I help you not make those mistakes or help you fight those mental battles. You know. Yeah. So, so that you can prevail. Yeah. So that was really that was really touching, you know. And it's like when I when I found out that my baby mother was pregnant with with my son, it was like I already knew no matter what, I was raised to step up. You had to be and there. Yeah, like I wasn't raised to not be present. Right. That's so, always um, something. That, and I, I wanted to ask you that as well. Do you think that that also urged you to be present in the life? I'm not saying that you wouldn't have been if you didn't have this going on, but sometimes I think that some of us who didn't have the real father in the life, whether we had a stepfather or somebody else or none at all, sometimes I think us in that generation, we all are now in our kids' lives. And I think that's for the better. But do you think you know, that is the case? I mean, yeah, there's... um. I mean, they did a study in, in Sweden about, like, joint parenting, and and um, they took, like, tw more than 12,000 kids, and they actually found out that, like, a good joint parenting situation actually turned out better for mental health for kids. And um, the, the what do they call it, the um, colloquial family um, unit that we have in America, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, where the mom and the dad have been together for years and they have multiple kids, like that was second. And then, of course, Broken Homes was, was third. So I think, yeah, like, if I'd have been in a broken home, if I didn't have that nurture, I, you know, might have had, might have had that instinct maybe because <clears throat> that's what I saw, that's what I was around. Okay. You know. So with that being said, now that you're in your son's life, you want to definitely make sure that's the case with him, you know, with his with yeah. his kids, he's definitely there. How do you balance being in your kid's life? Or, or are you are you and the mother um, on, on the greatest of terms? If you don't mind me prying. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah, so, I, like, her and I, we, if you read our text thread, we, we probably, <laughs> you'd probably be like, well, oh, maybe you guys don't get along too well. <laughs> That's take everybody <laughs> cursing each other out in text. But, everybody. Um, <laughs> but, no, like, we, we co-parent well, at least to the facade of what he can see. Great. Right. You know. And that's um, all that matters when to, to pre that's you know, present yeah. to the kid. As long so, you know, her and I we have we had minimal history really with like so there's not a ton of history there other than the child really. Um we met in two thousand eighteen under similar circumstances and kinda just hit it off. And then, you know, five months later, not even like four months later, you know. So there's not tons of pre being pregnant, this life form growing, my child. Right, right, right. You, you know, get a chance to know her personality. Yeah, so, and, and that's my mistake. I mean, I'm, um, you know, I, I should, you should get to know someone a little better before you choose to procreate or to, you know, so we weren't doing anything to prevent. Oh, I didn't uh, ask you. I'm not judging you. I'm yeah, talking about. But, <laughs> but what I'm getting at is I, I think you I hear should. What saying, like, yeah. I you know, and and I probably wouldn't have chose. <laughs> but you know, shout out to my baby mama. You know? Yeah, right. Of course, of course. But you know, at least you, you're definitely. <laughs> she's a great mom. She's a great mom. She's well, that's mom. good. That's and then also you're able to see him, and yeah. you know you're able to make sure you're yeah. balanced being in his life and working. I, um, it's hard for a woman to deny. A man wanting to be in their son's life. They I will really say have that's to have a grudge. A tough, Let's touch that topic, bro. Yeah. So it has to be <laughs> some deep, deep, deep rooted grudge for her to really, really not want you around your kid. Sometimes they would say, This is your fault. Mm -hmm. You did this. Yeah. This is your fault. So they were you know, But yeah, so in that case, some women will naturally say, Okay, take this child for this amount of time. Take this child. They like might be, you know, natural mothers and say, Hey, give me a back. I missed the baby. I don't have a life or they have a life or whatever the kids will say. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, some will still say, hey, take this child. What is up with these women not allowing you to see them for some time, using this as some kind of bargaining chip <laughs> to say, um, I need you to do this. Now, if he's not supporting and doing what he has to do, I'm sorry. Um, you chose a, a terrible man. Yeah. And, and this is the thing, you know, and I don't yeah. mean to use you as an example, but you said you had a prior experience uh, with her not too long. But with someone else who's been with someone for a long time and could see these telltale signs, yeah. it's probably time for you to take that cup and <laughs> leave that party. <laughs> yeah. But, but why, you know, they still go do it, right? Yeah. And, and, and what, what is, what is, I don't know, man. That's a, I, that's a, go, I'm go gonna, ahead. I'm going to defend women here and I'm going to say that's a two way street. <laughs> Okay, 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 good. You Just play bad. You play bit. good cop. I'm gonna play bad. Yeah, cop. a little bit, but you know, not. <laughs> That's funny. But and and I say that only because, like, you know, I. We all know we all adults, right? Like when, when when you're in a relationship and you know, like, even if you're the toxic one, you should be able to go. Look, I'm not good for you. I've done that. I've been I've been in a quick relationship, like where you meet somebody, you think it's gonna work, mm -hmm. you know, and it might matter what last what two months. Maybe so, but you one of you goes look, uh -uh. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I you see gotta, a couple of things, you got, yeah, like. <laughs> red hurricane flags, you know, yeah, like, right, big one. So you know, and, and and social media I think plays a big role in in that because you see all these you know on TV and stuff. I'm not gonna you know give any specifics because we all know the shows that just kind of like, oh, fall, I don't even want I want to word this correctly wrongly empower women to be in control of the situation. Definitely, definitely. We can always say that. And they use that as a, it's like a temper tantrum sometimes. It's like a lever. It's definitely like leverage. leverage in, yeah. in whatever case may it be. So <laughs> they'll hold, you know, they'll hold whatever hostage. Yeah. Um, the it's, child, they'll hold back their whatever, yeah. the goods, the ability to see yeah. you, even if you're in a relationship. So sometimes that is something that you said they cool. see on... Mm -hmm. 
TV or media. How TikTok, about that? Facebook, yeah, whatever you think friends. this is the okay, you're gonna use this always, to get that. Always got a friend in there, bro. <laughs> oh, always, always, always. And, always. and the friend always single, right? Friends <laughs> yeah. don't never have. Can't they keep got, a man of damn self. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's always the case. But it's crazy to see that. So I'm just saying, what's up with these women that don't let them see the 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 kids, or vice versa, let the kids see the dad, and you know. But it's just crazy to to, to think that people still do that. Um, on another topic, um, when you're in your kid's life, um, with you being there and you're making sure that you want to be there, um, do you think that? Um, and this is a delicate topic. But do you think that a pro-choice um, uh, voice for the men should be, 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 you know, like present, present or vocalized yeah. or something? To do you think that men and like to teach that to the next? I don't even know how to type? word it. I'm sweating under my arm so bad saying no, that. I, <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. Because it is but such a touchy. It is subject, a touchy. Yeah. It's a touchy subject. Well, but do you think men should have a say in this? creation of this of yeah. this child so i i mean in today's world where i mean let's just be frank right like gender's fluid um and not not and i'm not agreeing or disagreeing i'm just, well, yeah, gonna, I'm just saying yeah but gender's fluid would be and told that like you know kids can be reassigned this if they feel a certain type of way and and and, you, and in that society you know you you're gonna have to if however you're gonna treat a woman is how you're gonna have to treat a man like, you know, I mean, I'm not saying let's merge the WNBA and NBA tomorrow, but what I'm saying is it's like for purposes of equality. Correct, correct. You have to treat them similarly. So if you're going to write a law for a woman and we're going to say that, you know, biology is kind of out the window and it's like correct, I can correct. be what I want regardless of what I got, then you're going to have to say that, like, if a woman can, you know, let's say 20 weeks, Let's just hypothetically say they pass an amendment tomorrow and it goes through Congress, the democratic process, which is what I believe in. So whatever comes out of that is what I got to do. That's America. Right. That's in the Constitution. It's an amendment. You right. got to do it. You know what I mean? Whether you agree or not. So, right. hey. 20, you know, let's say 20 weeks. Like, I think the man should have an opportunity to in, in them 20 weeks to decide. Okay. As well, especially if they're like they know they're going to be the dad or they, you know, maybe like with the technology, there's a way to. And uh, maybe I should have looked this up a little more before formulating as an opinion completely on yeah, it. But, it's all right. but like to be able to DNA test in utero, right? Like where they can, I think that's possible. I mean, I don't know. I've never known no one to do it, but where you get like the DNA. So you know you're the man, and from that point on, you have the same amount of time to say, hey, I want to be financially liable in, in, in this child's life. Right. Or you can say, look, I'm good. Hey, yeah, you know, I think like, some yeah, do yeah, say I, that. I haven't but met the kid. I have. I don't know him. But look, you have the right to to kind of get rid of it if you want to not be the mom. Mm -hmm. So because my biggest burden is like financial and be it doesn't mess my body up, but it definitely messes my bank account up too. Right. You know, right. if you don't want to be there, right, and you're right. stuck paying a thousand a month for a kid, like. You know, if, and if not you only that, you're that, stuck you, paying that, but you're it, stuck going through this mental roller coaster. That's uh, choice. That's everybody. freedom. Where everyone yeah, has that a is little true. bit of a choice. Inequality in, in all in all things yeah. being equal, I do hear you with that being said. But um, hey, in their defense, like you said, it's kind of coming from them. And these are why certain laws are being turned. But why are they, if they're controlling what the woman can and can't do with their body in a certain amount of time, well, let the man have a say with what's his. You know, responsibility, responsibility too, because it's coming out of his body too, but it's yeah. just not as 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 growing. It's not it's an not, incubator. It's, yeah, correct. Well, it's I mean, if you consider that you have to have, look, you got to keep your at a certain temperature, or else they die, and if they get too high, they die. <laughs> so we incubate a little bit too. Sometimes you do, and then y'all, the and some of them people wearing them form. little. You know what I'm saying? We be going out, and some of y'all man be wearing the wrong stuff. Man, these dudes with these little bitty shorts. Yeah, what are those little, called again? Um, uh, they uh, called them something. There was a name. I, I wish don't know, I man. I'm such a man. I don't even know what that <laughs> word is for the <laughs> for the fans. I don't even know. But co-parenting is definitely a, a, a reason why you got to discuss those those things. Um, I did have a couple stats as well when I was looking up. I saw that um, it said, um, "Well, the outcomes of children who are exposed to parent, parental mental health problems." Um, it says that 18.2 percent of parents uh, that suffer from mental health. Uh, excuse me. 18.2% of parents suffer from mental illness and uh, illness, and 3.8% of parents suffer from, you know, like serious mental illness. So a lot of these parents are kind of having issues or, or they're going, you know, through some kind of, you know, mental episode because right. they have to, one, 
fend for themselves now. They can't really, you know, depend on anyone else. And sometimes you have to do that younger than others, but they're really supporting a life. So yeah. they're really, you know, going through something that really changes them. So let me say that one more time. It says that 18.2% of parents suffer from mental illness. Yeah. And that's really because of the way that you are taking responsibility of one person uh, and, and them after that. You really yeah. are, you, you know, it causes anxiety. And sometimes women think that men don't have these problems because we yeah. keep quiet. But yeah. damn it, we already been recording over two minutes. We can curse now. Sometimes <laughs> this shit is stressful. For real. And right. think of them having more than one, you know, kid and this and this and that. Yeah. But also. Or think more of, than one baby daddy. Right. You know, and, you know, and I know it's stressful for them too. But women, you know, sometimes create a mental roller coaster. And these men do too. Because like you said, yeah. you have the option to know and protect yourself. You know, as a man, you can have more than one option, you know, to. To, to, to prevent these sex, you know, had, had, you know, put that thing on or, yeah. you know, pull that thing out, whatever you want to do, but it's just or crazy. Snip to, that thing. It's whatever. Uh, you, know, it's, you know, a lot of men don't snip that thing unless you're talking about shaving. Shout out to Manscaped. I hope they become a, <laughs> a sponsor soon, but <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, we're not talking about snipping nothing. I'm not an advocate of getting any kind of skeletomy, uh, so that to me, so no, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you, like you said, you do have options to do that and prevent yeah. that. But like you said, how do, or like I said, mental health is an issue with parents. How do you feel about these fathers, um, you know, being uh, in that situation? Because definitely uh, the fathers are a part of that percentage. And I have another stat, too. But how do you think that the fathers are? Um, well, I want to hear the stat again. I want to hear another one? some more information. Yeah, that 18.2. You're like, well, I need to hear yeah. So this is another one. recent, numbers. right? This was, um, I think, studied in um I think in 2020, but it says recent, and this has had to change since 2020, but it said recent uh, research has uh, demonstrated that when fathers' mental illness, uh, mental illness or mental health declines, so does the quality of their co-parenting relationship. Um, just oh, yeah. Again, just because I didn't read it correctly, it says, and this was conducted in 2020. And we're going to go with the uh, site because you like to, you know, get your research well, yeah, on. You get, yeah, numbers, sites, you know, you got NAMI, sites, something. but yeah, we're going to shout them out on NAMI. But it's is. old, but I would like to think <laughs> that <laughs> yeah, in the 2022, in a couple of years, it has to have gotten worse. So once again, recent research has demonstrated that when a father's mental health or mental, you know, um, well-being declines, so does the quality of their co-parenting relationships. One, do you think that is true? And how, what, how do you feel about that? Oh, it's. Uh, I think it's demonstrably true i mean yeah. you have to really like if you think about anxiety and ptsd like how they've how they've started to like learn about ptsd you know as a veteran and i know a lot of people that have it from reasons that you wouldn't think like if you asked an average person like do you think this incident would cause ptsd they're gonna say probably not right. but it can it can so you know, what if a man so wanted to be like he thought that she was it? They she got pregnant. He wants to marry her. She might say no. You know what I mean? Like let's just you know I'm, that's a hypothetical. You know right. that's conjecture, it. but yeah. it, it's a possibility of the universe. It could happen, and I'm sure it's happened a million times. So you have those situations, and the man's just heartbroken, and like they, like heartbreak. You know. I mean, I've just even broke up with girls, that, or they broke up with me for one reason or another, and mm -hmm. I've been like, because oh, I, I wasn't really doing anything wrong. I mean, maybe, you know, someone can always nitpick a few things wrong here and there. Yeah, always. So that's always fair enough, you know, and like if you don't communicate and listen about it and stuff and change it, then you know, I could fall apart. But I've had those situations where I've been like, oh, like, how did that happen to me? Like, right. me? Like, I thought we were good. Like, we never even talked did, about How did this. you feel about that? And I don't mean to put your emotions on the platter all on this, but yeah, no, you know, how you did could, that make you feel? Because that affects how... Well, you can go mean. into, like, anxiety attacks. I mean, especially if you've... You know, if, let's... I mean, a lot of us come up f through super stressful childhoods. You know, what? regardless, like, if you're from an inner city, if you're from the country, like, it, it's just kind of, stressful. It's yeah, all, it can child, be stressful. Sometimes. You know, there's some people, silver spoon, silver platter, and they don't experience those kind of stressors. But you look at, you know, those types of attacks, if your child's around. And they see you like that. What do you think that's going to do to them? For forever, they'll be scarred. You know, like why is that? Uh, daddy's supposed to be strong. Like why is he? Why is mm -hmm. he like this? Or why is he taking it out on me? 
Right. You know, why is he or why is he taking out on that object? But I don't understand that. Right. So I think he's taking that it out on me. Right. Why is he drinking so much? Right. Why, why is, is he, he leaving? smoking so much? Why, why is, is he, he gone or why is he gone? doing this? Yeah. Yelling or whatever. Why is he quiet? Yeah. Why is he always quiet? There's you know? always that one why? Because like we never fit in that box to our children. It's a guy that I work with, and I, I know that he's battling some type of stuff. And I always I, I shout him out, hey, man, how you doing? You know, boom, boom, boom. I get him to talk and open up a little bit, yeah. actually, more than others. But it's sometimes visible that he's going through something because he's always so mute. He never talks, never gives you any emotion. And maybe that's just his demeanor, and he says that. But sometimes he's literally just looking down. So, you know, I kind of check up on people. But as a man, you know sometimes when a man is going through it, even if they grumpy, they mad, okay, they're not going to talk. You're not going to get anything from them. But if you see them in a down state, you kind of be like, hey, uh, hey, bro, what's up, man? Pick, you know, pick your head up, man. How you doing, man? You know, whatever the case may be. So knowing that these stats are real, and knowing that that a father's health is really impactful, or it does impact the not only the kids but the house and the parental relationship and all that, knowing that that is a factor, um, I think that we definitely should try to, you know, you know, try to assist them a little bit more, you know, blend those lines of, of communication so that these fathers can yeah. can be cool because that's that's mind boggling, you know, to, to see that. That's a that's a stat, you know. You got me looking at stats, and I've been looking at them. But now that the well, now that we look at them in context, you're like, bro, yeah. literally, once a father is out of that house, or once his mental state declines, once he's quiet, mute, gone, angry, or whatever the case may be, the whole house is in disarray. And yeah. my buddy said on the last podcast, he was like, when I wasn't at home speaking greatness into my kids, hey man, you do this, you great, you great, great. They 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 great started slipping. They was going down yeah. when I was away from them. It started you know going down. Um, do you think that you are affected by what happens from or, you know, what's said by your child's mother, you know, when it comes to your mental health sometimes? I think you already kind of hinted it, but do you kind of yeah. think that that sometimes she, gives you that? Uh, Yeah, I mean. <laughs> and you don't uh, have to tell me no text. Don't show me no text. No, nah, that's cool. My just, phone's <laughs> in the charge over there anyway, yeah. I, but I'm just saying, do you um, think that, that sometimes no, she, as a man makes you upset, especially when it's concerned of your kid? They know that, they know, like, Especially when we we were living together and and she was pregnant and I was like, you know, there to make sure that, you know, everything was good for the baby. I wanted to be present. I wanted to try to make it work, right? She learned in that time period to kind of, like, she learned the daggers that she could throw at me, right? That would get me to, like, you know, like, verbal daggers, you know? Like, not physical daggers. (laughs) She she knew what things to say to me just to get me, like... Yeah, and it wasn't even like it would be personal stuff that I would confide in her, right? And then she'd throw it back in your face, or like a flaw that you're a little self conscious about that they've picked up on, right? That you're a little self conscious about, or some, or you like definitely like past relationships, right? If I would confide something in her about a past relationship. That's why so and so left you, and that's why I did the back then. And I'd be like, <laughs> "Look, like you can't." That's told to you in confidence that in this that it won't be of used silence, against me. Yeah, yeah, that won't be used against me in the court of our relationship. In the court of this room. <laughs> in the court of this or room. This kitchen is always yeah. right. Like you can't. So that stuff will get to you. So but I will say, I've had a few like moments where I've had to really exert self control. You know, over some things, and maybe yeah. still said some things. That in I your mind is pop, 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 off the pop, but you calm it down. You know. But in their defense, sometimes we do use words against them, especially, and I'm not saying yours, I don't know her situation. If that mother has more than one kid by more than one man, yeah. Sometimes we'd be saying, you know, Psh, that's why he lived. That's why he can't give him. That's all going to But you gotta, you gotta remember, if Russia fires a nuke at us first, we fire in one. Oh back. yeah, I'm not gonna just so shoot you. You know, it has to be retaliation. They throw a dagger, and you dodge it a little bit, or you you take it and then you pull it out and you throw it right back. We just turned into a relationship podcast, definitely. I mean, well, I'm just kidding, but yeah, it does. But that's a that big way. like we've seen. That's a big part of of per- parenting. Of parenting a father, yeah. being a father. Is right. having to deal with that, Cause especially right. if you're not together. If you're not, to, like, people have to deal with their wives, bro. Right. You know what I mean? Like, oh, your yeah. wife could be, like, just getting on your nerves. Just like, pissing you. You know what I mean? But you still Fuck off. Love, you, you still <laughs> together. You just, you right. know, there's always that. Yeah. Girlfriends, wives, you know, whatever. That's 
Father and then you turn into that old grumpy couple that just like walk, just tolerate well, each other. Isn't that better than uh, sleeping around? Yeah, I is. think so. <laughs> it always it is. It's on, definitely de- better. Depends on the who you sleeping around with. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on another topic, <laughs> we could add some laughter as a sound effect. No, but uh, on another topic, um, we we're going to touch on some current events, man. Since we both are fathers, um, it did say. Um, and we do want to send our condolences. We already had one um, shooting that we spoke about on this podcast, but this is another one. And we want to make sure that we also send our condolences to the ones that are affected in the Highland Park um, shooting. Um, but we do want to, um, you know, just touch on the topic and ask him some questions about the father. It says that um, what the father uh, was being is being investigated for signing off on the son's application for getting that rifle or, you know, the arms that he did have. Um, and we're not going to touch upon anything about the guns because I'm, I definitely am an advocate about my son being able to know and exercise his right to have arms and definitely know how to use them yep. at a young age. The younger, the better. I took my son shooting, and we definitely have a bond because of that. But anyway, how do you feel about not knowing the telltale signs of your son being able to take out something like that? And let's say I'm not judging the father. Let's want to say I do not want to send any kind of – judgment his way or say that he didn't tell or whatever he might have told I don't want to say any of that but how do you feel about having a son and not knowing that something is wrong or they have the capability to do some some shit like that right well I've actually read these kind of stories fascinate me Um, like mass shooter stories and and not because it's fascinating that people die that's not what I'm saying it's what you're talking about. What leads up to it? The yeah. backstory. Why? What made them do that? And it's yes. for prevention purposes, right? So I could learn. Maybe in my life, you know, I'm, I interact with many people, and you know, if you can see those signs in a child, a, a teen, a, you know, young a adult, coworker, even coworker, yeah. old man, you know, if they, they come in all shapes and sizes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In all ages. So, so this 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 one happened to be a, a slightly troubled young man. Now, again, I've known some friends of mine growing up that had the cops called on them three or four times by their family. Had some throwing knives and maybe hey, some, I had a homie, he some was, stars taken away, right? Like, he used to take cats and hang them. But, so you see what I mean? Like, <laughs> but he turned out okay. People. Yeah, right? They, he, they, sometimes they grow out of it. <laughs> but, you know, so I read an article that said the dad said that, um, it was actually about this exact topic, and the dad said that uh, he... It was like a childish tantrum when he said what he said, but like they called the police anyway just because, like kind of like maybe to get him to talk to someone else or get him the help that he needed, maybe a referral to a, you know, like what is it, that three-day hold where they take you on? Or a scare, you know, what's the call, scare straight? Yeah, Yeah. well, no, or like well that too, but like the three-day hold, like if you have a mental health problem, like they kind of like ward you, kind you know what I mean? Okay, process. It's not arresting you, but it's taking you to a place where you can chill out, Get the help you need. Maybe talk to a few people. Oh, like you said that was done to the, that. to the no, guy. it wasn't. But maybe that's what they were in hopes of. I don't oh, know if that's what okay. was done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because um, I've known people that like I, I had someone close to me that they tried to take a lot of Xanax pills on purpose. It seemed on purpose. They still deny it, but whatever. Um, and I had to call the ambulance for them. Like they were oh, wow. literally like. Because I asked them, how many did you take? How many did you take? And they didn't really, couldn't tell me. But they were, like, slumping and, like, going out, like, and passing out. Eyes rolling in the head, heart yeah. fluttering. You know, I know a little bit of CPR and EMT-type training from the military. So I was able to kind of tell that her body wasn't in the best of shape, right? Damn, something wasn't right. Yeah, so, wasn't right. so you know, you have you have all that in, as a factor um, that you don't know what happened. You know, is he was he battling an addiction? Was he, you know, that they that he was clean from? Like, we don't know a lot of the variables. Right. And, like, and then it'll come out. I'm sure there'll be a report. There'll be a super investigation in three to five years. We'll get a book. The, there's going to be information about it, right? But as of now, it's hard to tell those variables. So when I cast judgment, the only judgment I can cast is, again, you know, I'm, I'm kind of uh, constitutional in my views. I believe that it was written by and amended by a society that cares and that is trying to move forward and trying to be the best society on earth, you know, I, I do believe that um, with my heart that that document with the democratic process is meant for that. So that being said, he signed for a gun for his son under age. So in, in Illinois, you can, the parent can sign between 18 and 21 for them to get a rifle. Oh, 
Okay. So he signed, and in that, he put himself liable as a, yeah, as a common on the code contract. Signer, right. Now, whether I believe he was right or wrong for signing that, had the best intentions, his son had been doing great for years since them incidents or whatever, what right. have you. You know what I mean? Everybody puts out rap videos. The fact that they're trying to use rap videos and rap lyrics to, to say that he's been planning this. You know how many rappers I know that talk about some if you know, he, if he had things. If he said he was playing, then that's why I'm asking I mean. as like, a parent, are you to tell these signs? If he did have um, an I episode think, prior, I wouldn't sign for him to have a rifle. An episode of... Or you if know, you do, lock that shit up. True. And, or take him to teach him how to use it, like you said. You know, or maybe... Sh- uh, Use it as like a bonding thing to teach responsibility and, and positivity, better things. You know, good things make create better, you know, more good things. Right. So if you, you know, so yeah, I mean, there's a little bit at fault there. Like he, they should have noticed, like you said, like you wouldn't have signed if you saw those, you know, those things. You see, so but again, well, like, you know, until you're in that position, it is hard to really say because you don't know if, like I said, if the kid has been good for the last three years and you're like, you know what, maybe... Maybe my son's turned around. You know, maybe this is something I can do. You got to do enough research to really cast That's what too I, much judgment. Exactly. But I do know that it would be sad to see but that you sad. have a son <laughs> or a daughter that, you know, capable of taking something, taking out some, 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 yeah. some damage or some shit like that. And usually these are boys. Yeah, so, well, that, I, I, I mean, I'm going to bring it to this, and this might sound like a crazy theory, but it's testosterone and estrogen. I think testosterone breeds a little more aggressional type of um, tendencies. Yeah. And I think estrogen does more emotional, passive. Um, and I think society has created passive aggressiveness through females. I think it's more rationality with women. Also, I did read a study, and I don't I have the numbers. Though. I don't have the exact numbers, okay? <laughs> I like this. I didn't give an one. exact number. But I do anything. know that it said that men are more likely to commit suicide. 100%. And, um, you know, like I said, these young boys are definitely... Um, affected by one, either the father being there or not being there, or the lack of communication. So that's the topic at hand. Uh, but I know that as a father, it would be kind of upsetting, sad to find out that your son was capable of doing something like that. And we hope to have all of our young sons um, knowledgeable and aware of their surroundings to one, prevent that from happening or get away from that. And two, to make sure our kids, you know, try and not to it. be like that. Yeah, definitely record it. What'd you say? Re- 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 oh, I thought it. you said record it. Thought, no, no, don't put it oh, on Instagram. <laughs> Just report it. Like I thought he you, said record it. Right? Yeah, report it. If you see something like that, or like I said, when you see those guys at work, hey, man, what's up, man, you good? I know, man. Look, don't shoot me, man. What's up? You good? No, I'm just kidding. No, but you give people those little, you know, verbal signs, those little optical signs. Hey, man, are you okay today? I know something's not going to do. You need some. They're not going to talk to you. They're probably not. But those little um, days where you see that something going on, you can still kind of, you know, you know, you know, try to reach out. But like I said, it definitely would be detrimental to have a have a son that kind of have something like that. So we want to make sure that the father is, um, you know. With his with his head with his head held high right now, and we also want to send our condolences to the whole family um, because this was a you know a tragic event that yeah. took place. Well, all the the seven people that died, you know, definitely, um, definitely condolences to their families, and I think it was it twenty more critically injured that are still either. With a, I don't know if I heard thirty eight or twenty. It's up there, it's but up there. Uh, the number is high, and I don't want to try to belittle anyone's uh, damage with the number. So right. I do know that it was some damage taken. But, um, yeah, um, with that being said, we want to switch to a lighter note. <laughs> um, do you have any tips for the new fathers, um, the ones that are – because your child is how – your son is how old? Almost three. Almost three. So he is kind of – he's not a new father, but he does know what it takes to be a new father. Do you have any tips for those guys with the kids that are under six months? <laughs> well, or, or three years. Go ahead. Just any I mean, tip for those <laughs> So, I mean, you can kind of break it into time frames. Like when they're an infant, you know, they, they cry for four things. You know, they're hungry, sleepy, they wet themselves, or they're uh, hungry, sleepy, wet themselves, or tired. Or Wait, that's sleepy. That's <laughs> sleepy. I but think so sleepy. there's three things. So I just made it easier <laughs> for you. You know, they're hungry, tired, or they've done their, you know, potty. You know, or like Those some, three tips. maybe something hurts a little bit, but usually if something's like hurting them, there'll be other like signs of it. Cranking it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I ain't going to But, you know, so if they're crying, you know, just, hey, you hungry? And if they're not really, they'll 
They'll eat. If they're hungry, they're going to eat. They're going to eat. They're going to eat. And um, if they're tired, lay them down. Put them in a bassinet. You know? Move, rock them. Rock them a know? little bit. Play some smooth yeah, jazz. Some. <laughs> you know? Death metal. Sometimes my son goes to sleep to death metal. Oh, sometimes. yeah? Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> but, um, oh, that's funny. Yeah, so there's, there's uh, you know, tons of those little tips. And I'd say, like, from, like, a year to two years old, you definitely, you want to be, like, teaching them motor skills like walking around like standing up balancing like get put them on your stomach and kind of make their legs like do the balance because like that's gonna come crucial when they're a toddler i found that out i did that with my son i know people who didn't and the clumsiness the bumps the bruises you'll save money on band-aids and you'll just have a happier child because when they're not crying that's a good thing Right. So, like, if they're always hurting and they're bruised up and they just ha- touch it a little bit, now nah, it hurts again. And, I mean, not saying that I'll, you know, that that's a bad thing to, but if they're already bruised up because they didn't learn motor skills. So, and then two to three, I would say, well, he hasn't reached three yet, so I'm still kind of in the middle of it. But what I've noticed is just discipline, like, at that point. Because yeah, now, they're, now they're understanding the English language more. Like, they don't they know more than maybe 50 words, you know. They're starting to really put sentences together. They're starting to understand the sentences that you're putting together. They understand emotion. Like, you know, once you get a little, if you can inflect your voice up a little bit, they start to understand, like, okay, that's not a good thing to do, right. you know. Or um, he's happy. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, and then it, when you're, but always applaud them for doing the right thing. Oh, so, like, if you say, hey, throw this away for daddy or throw your trash away, or you say, you know, hey, bring your juice cup so I can fill it because I'm already in the kitchen and it's over there and he's right, closer. Right. You know, thank you. You know, right. tell them, have them be polite. Have them, you know, but instill that because if they don't get it, then I feel like three to four is going to be rougher and then four to five would be rougher. Now I'm playing catch-up. It only catch gets up. worse. It only but gets then, worse. You know, now I'm playing catch-up. So if you can basically just try to learn your kid and that comes with spending time. It comes with um, yeah. taking them out in public. It comes with... You know, just being present, and it comes with, you know, really, if you care about your kid, you're going to learn those things, and you're going to see it's anyway, not hard. If you're there, you're going to yeah. do it anyway. My only tip is uh, keep the glass away at the house. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, there's a little small area, you know, sometimes you used to have a little stuff around. Um, just take it all away. Just take it all out, especially if they two to three, just take all that shit out. You might as well get rid of it because you're going to break it. <laughs> you know, anyway. But, yeah, man, we do appreciate y'all. Once again, we're going to go ahead and end with that episode or with this episode of the uh, Fathers from the Hood podcast. Uh, like I said, we do want to shout out to Monster Mix LLC, to the location. We also want to shout out to our special guest, Craig, Thank man. You. Um, do you, you have anything to end with? Um, no, I'll just keep it real. Um, Las Vegas is a fun city and if you ever come out here, if you want to look me up on the Snapchat, you can look me up, CR313188. <laughs> Just hit it up. You know, he dropping his <laughs> He dropping his shit. Yeah. Hit him up. What do you say? CR three one eight. CR three one three one eight eight. Wow. Yeah, it I made up. it when I was thirty one, and it's my initial, so I didn't know. I, I'm lame. Yeah. Oh, it's all good, man. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all come back for another episode. Shout out to Craig. We appreciate you for being here. Y'all keep taking care of those kids, and we love you. Be back for another episode. Yes, sir. <laughs>